Lincoln Metro Park Nature Center. Welcome to Science with the Metro Parks, where we do short and easy science experiments that you can do in your own home with things you can find around the house or in the pantry. Today on Science with the Metro Parks, we're going to have a special guest, and he's going to teach you how to make your very own rock cycle with things you can find around the house. All right, let's go ahead and bring him in. Hello, everyone. My name is Ignatius Metamorphosementis. You can call me Iggy. As you can tell, I am a geologist. So today we're going to be talking about the rock cycle and then making a model rock cycle with things you can find in your kitchen. So first, a little bit about rocks. You may know that rocks can be divided into three main classes. There's igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. So think volcanoes for igneous, so volcano erupting. An example of an igneous rock would be granite, molten rock coming up out of the earth. And when it solidifies, you can see all the different minerals crystallize there. For sedimentary rocks, think layers. So you could have a layer of sand and then a layer of mud and then some more sand and a flood. Just think layers. Sandstone is a great example of that, and this is a perfect example of where you can see the layers. Now, <clears throat> either one of these can also be turned into a metamorphic rock through heat and pressure. So imagine that one of these rocks is taken underground by a great earthquake, and down below the earth, great amounts of heat and pressure will reform that rock into something a little bit different. Marble is an example of a metamorphic rock. So we're going to do a model of the rock cycle in our kitchen. Here's the materials you're gonna need. A table with a tablecloth because science can get messy. You will need two mixing bowls, at least two paper plates, peanut butter, jelly. Oh, this sounds like it's gonna be a tasty experiment. Some sugar graham crackers, some cake sprinkles, some water, a knife for spreading, and a spoon. And please remember when you're doing science experiments that you always need to have some parental supervision. Now it's time to make our models. So we're going to take a paper plate and a graham cracker. Our graham cracker represents the bedrock, so we're going to put that down first. The first thing that's going to happen to our sedimentary rock is we're going to have a mudslide. So peanut butter is going to represent the mud. Take a nice healthy dab of peanut butter, spread it on top of our bedrock. There we go. So we have two layers in our sedimentary rock. Next, a sandstorm. I'm going to use the sugar to represent the sand. Here comes the wind with a sandstorm. There we go. Now we have three layers. The next thing, think of there's a volcano that's erupting elsewhere on the planet and it's spewing ash everywhere. We're going to use our cake sprinkles to rep represent the volcanic ash. Here we go. Volcanic ash. Oh no, another earthquake and a giant slab of rock comes down on top of what we've already made. So now we have, I think it's up to five layers. Another mudslide. And the same rainstorm that caused the mudslide is also going to cause a flood. Here's our jelly. And yet another sandstorm. Another volcanic eruption. And another earthquake. And here's our model of our sedimentary rock. You can see all the layers there. And if we hold up our real sedimentary rock, you can see that they both have many layers. 
Now that's one part of the rock cycle. We're gonna start with our sedimentary rock, but something is going to happen to the sedimentary rock to change it. Imagine there's an earthquake and our sedimentary rock falls down into a crevasse that's opened up into the earthquake very, very, very deep into the earth. And another rock falls on top of it. So take another paper plate. This is where our metamorphic process comes in. Remember, heat and pressure. And we take our two rocks and we're adding heat and pressure. So I'm pressing down on it. Now I'm gonna hit it a little bit. You don't wanna hit it too hard because you don't want pieces to go flying everywhere. And now we have our, oh, there's a piece of it stuck to this one. Here's our metamorphic rock. Does it look the same as our original sedimentary rock? Well, you can see some similarities. The um, materials are, are there. there are, some of them are recognizable, but it doesn't look exactly the same. It has changed. Now, we have another earthquake, and the earth opens up even farther. Our rock falls deeper and deeper down into the earth. So we're going to add it to our mixing bowl. It's going so deep into the earth this time that where it ends up, there is a molten rock. I'm going to take some of our water. This is our lava, molten rock. Add it to our metamorphic rock and stir everything up. Here we go. Now we have the makings of an igneous rock. Imagine this is molten rock deep within the earth. And there's a volcanic eruption and some of our igneous material comes spewing up out of the volcano and into that bowl. If we let this dry, we'd be able to see how our igneous rock has formed from our molten material. Now, if you have your parents' permission, you can do a different method of making an igneous rock. You get out a blender. You don't have to do it this way, but sometimes it's a little fun. You do need to have your parents with you when you're doing this. We take our metamorphic rock, put it down into the blender, add some more liquid rock, our water. Here we go. And this is getting churned up deep within the earth. <laughs> Mmm, delicious igneous smoothie. There we go. You don't want to drink this. So we've made a model of our rock cycle from sedimentary to metamorphic to igneous. Now, like all good scientists, I'm going to clean up this mess. You've got to remember to clean up after your science experiments too. Thank you for watching Science with the Metro Parks. Please remember to like and subscribe and good day.